Hi friends, um, good morning. So I've been asked a million times maybe until now by so many patients and people who desire rhinoplasty about the risks and complications for this cosmetic procedure. So I thought I'll make this video emphasizing on the risks and complications not necessarily meaning that every patient who comes here gets these complications but this is something you should be aware of because a lot of patients do ask us and we keep on telling them about these things so as far as risks and complications go i've classified them into two groups the first is the risk and complication that can happen while you're here with us which means in the first one week of your surgery the second is the complication that can happen later on in the next few months i've done this so you can understand clearly and final part of my video i'm going to tell you about various steps various precautions various suggestions that can reduce the incidence of these complications all right so now most of the rhinoplasty procedures as you know is done under general anesthesia and there is a small risk for general anesthesia why do i call it small is because we do not take patients who got a high grade of anesthesia risk like an asa grade 3 or 4 we do not take them up for surgery here at richardson's we turn them away uncontrolled diabetes other serious medical issues we do not take them up for rhinoplasties so that's a no no so obviously it's not a complication you're not a candidate itself for the procedure but even when you are a candidate with very low risk you have to understand that it's like taking a plane there is a small risk that something can happen with general anesthesia many patients ask me doctor can you give me 100% guarantee that nothing would ever happen to us now look that's not something that i say that way but i tell them look it's probably safer than driving a four wheeler or a two wheeler on indian roads or probably way safer than taking any of the flights anywhere in the world so that's pretty safe but still there is a small risk point number 1 the other issues that you can happen are related to surgery what are the main problems bleeding can happen very commonly because you know the nose is very vascular the septum is very vascular vascular meaning lot of blood vessels are coming there and because of that you know there are patients who even are bleeding from the nose when they have no issues and bleeds from an area called little's area so the nose being very vascular does have bleeding problems now this is going to get addressed in the first 7 days of surgery in fact the tapes that we put in the dressings that we do the nasal packs that we do are mainly targeted against arresting this bleeding and to get good hemostasis another very important factor is the anesthesia so we have an excellent team they give hypotensive anesthesia which means the pressure is going to be really less we can see clearly and less bleeding but yes there is a risk of bleeding the next thing that ha- that can happen is infection remember every surgery there is a chance of infection and with the nose you know because very often we work on the bone we work on the cartilage we work on the skin and we also work on the nasal mucosa so four different types of you know tissues or skin that we're working on and also we're moving these to new locations we're adjusting the shape of the nose we're removing some bones from certain areas we're putting a graft that is we're adding on pieces of cartilage we're removing something from the dorsum so when you're doing this kind of addition and subtraction and playing around with these bones and changing the shapes and augmenting and removing there is a chance of infection Now at Richardson's our reports like about 1.2% or less than 1% in complicated cases and in simple cases maybe it will be 0.01 the good news however is even when there's a very minimal infection happening since we tend to keep the patients here with us for a week for 5 to 6 days we are here to take care of that problem of yours so that part of infection you don't need to worry but yes there is something that you can get which is infection so this is the three main things that can happen actually with any surgery what are the special things with the nose for example you are coming here to get a shape change improvement in the nasal contour 
and this is perceptive to what the patient wants to what we deliver finally with the surgery so sometimes it does happen that the patient is not satisfied completely you have to understand this it's not exactly a complication but it's something very very part of this rhinoplasty because patients have to understand sometimes the limitations of the surgeons the safety aspect of the surgery and also the realistic expectation has to be explained by the surgeon to the patient so i tell my patients thus if both the patient and me or our surgical team member is not on the same page then there's no surgery meaning only when in the consultation we understand what each other want or what each other is getting then we go out for surgery so that is something that has to be kept in mind more so with rhinoplasty all right these are the things that tend to happen in the first week now let's move ahead so what are the permanent issues that you can have with a rhinoplasty point one most commonly is a shape change a slight bend in the nose and sometimes even block nose so you've got to be careful of surgeons who just doing the cosmetic aspect without doing functional part of the nose then the chance that you have some issues like that is higher if you have seen our videos if you've seen various talks that we give septum is an essential part of the nose and i inspect the septum in almost every case of a rhinoplasty even though it's technically just a rhinoplasty so septum causes or dns can cause breeding problems but a normal nice looking patient the good breathing can also sometimes develop issues with breathing post rhinoplasty so technically that also could be one of the complication a bent in the nose could be a complication little asymmetry you could get that as a complication some patients complain of stiffness around the tip they say doctor it's very tight yes that could be a complication that sometimes lingers on for as long as a year numbness around the tip or sometimes around the base of the nose a very few percentage of our patients do tell us but if the numbness lingers on for too long maybe 6 to 9 months and it's very hard for us to take care of that as well that numbness also could be part of the complication now i did tell you that a certain instructions we're going to give you now which will reduce these complications and make it more successful in terms of the results point 1 so we do not give any dietary restrictions for patients but we it's not a good idea to bite on an apple because you're going to move your lips and then you open your mouth a lot it can move the nose so that's a little bit of dietary restriction that you might have the next thing is about exercising so i think jogging swimming gymming all of these things are best avoided for about 6 weeks after rhinoplasty if you do not what can happen is bleeding because as i mentioned earlier the nose is very vascular and we told you that's going to be packing there's going to be fracture of the bone sometimes repositioning of the grafts so all of this can cause bleeding if you're not careful about taking a shower i think it's better to take a body wash not a shower especially in the time that you have the splint we keep splints for about 7 to 8 days till the earlier first swelling comes down primary healing occurs but do remember when nose is fractured then it takes at least 4 to 5 weeks for that bone to heal so this period also if you're not careful you can get a so called complication for rhinoplasty by getting the nose bent i i advise patients especially in india not to keep kids on the laps because they can bump into their noses and not wear spectacles for a few weeks because that can also sometimes cause issues with the dorsum So these are the few restrictions these are the things that you got to keep in mind that will reduce the chances of complications and risks now I've tried to cover most of it but this is not an all exhaustive list of complication that you might get but I've pretty much covered the major ones if you still have more doubts um we are more than happy to answer them for you if you have a specific concern then please don't put a message but whatsapp us on the number that we can give you with pictures of what has happened earlier and then we can try and get a more personalized solution 
to your care. There's another thing I want to mention here, which is also a possibility, a complication of rhinoplasty, which is septal perforation. It's a pretty bad complication, like how you can get a botched up nose too, but that is a complication you want to keep in the back of your head. If the septum is not worked upon well, and then you can have a communication as in the air goes from left to right, that doesn't feel nice for patients and if it's an anterior septal perforation that often warrants another surgery so with this i hope this was a useful video and as i mentioned earlier you can uh, message us with your doubts if you have any more and we'll be more than happy to answer them all thank you bye